think we'll be in there. Time to go to the dreaded double maths. No offence to the teachers, but you know that you're going to be doing converting fractions to deci thingy and algae. What's it called? And then it's going to be seriously dull the whole way through. Because you're going to be sitting at your desk, with chin in your hands, bored. Now, let me tell you the biggest secret in the whole of the maths world. It is completely and utterly unheard of in schools. I discovered it in year four. Ready? You're going to think I'm out of my mind, and you're quite literally not going to believe me. But math is actually pretty great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. But math is so boring. How can it even be possibly the tiniest but fun? Just hear me out. No question, math has gone and got a really bad name for itself. It's called all across the country. In fact, probably the world. One explanation for this is that someone, maybe an older sibling, has told their younger brother or sister the maths is terrible and it just goes from there. But even though we say it's rubbish, and it's most likely to be the most hated subject on the timetable, have you ever considered about what you think about maths? I've been to a few schools and I know for certain that I said I hate maths just to try and fit in. So is it really that bad? Why is it that we've labelled it as an uninteresting subject? When speaking to Mrs. Darius, the head of maths at Bromwood Hall, she said that she thinks that people don't enjoy maths because, as she says, it's probably for some people that they don't understand the basics when they're younger. This means that they learn a lot of the next steps as a process without understanding why it works. When you understand how maths works, it all fits together nicely and it has its kind of magic. Sadly, she thinks that lots of people don't get to see how it fits together, and they miss out. So, this explains why when speaking to some math students, they said that the only reason they didn't like maths was because, let me quote, it's hard. According to Oxford Learning, children don't favour maths because there isn't much room for creativity, and they can't personally connect to it, like languages or history. Furthermore, let us not forget those with dyscalculia, because they have a really hard time, seeing as the numbers just don't behave for them. Well, maybe you just haven't found the right type of maths. You can look for patterns in colours, or the segment in a window. What shape is it? Right, I know this is what every teacher says, but we do use maths in the outside world. Like, we really do. Not just in money and that sort of thing, but in sport, the measurements of the pitch and the scoring of the game. For transport, we use maths to see what time our bus is coming and the putting together of the train tracks. Then for food and drink, we need to use maths to see the right amount of ingredients for a recipe and the sugar intake per 100 grams. Most importantly, maths is an essential tool in the world of science. In fact, the world. Without maths, none of the discoveries made in science would be possible. You don't have to be highly intellectual, but you do have to pay attention to class and work hard because it does pay off when you're making amazing discoveries. Take Marjorie Rice. She was an American mother of five and had only completed primary school and high school education. But she found four new tessellating pentagons. This was a groundbreaking discovery that mathematicians had been puzzling out there for years, decades, if not centuries. And it just goes to show that if, you find the that if you work hard, you can find the unexpected, do the unexpected, and be the unexpected. Earlier on, I said that I found out this big secret about maths in year four. I've always been a bit of a school nerd, but even so, I found maths quite a drag. However, I then discovered Roots to Grow Maths Explorers. They changed my preconception of maths. They, dis they discovered and found it a whole new way to think about the subject. Answers aren't important. It's the questions that matter. Jason and Rita, the club leaders, introduced me to new challenges that were entertaining and enjoyable. For example, this term, we've been looking at data in the different continents of the world. In this particular week, when we were doing the challenge, we were looking at Africa. The aim was to find out what each of the hieroglyphs given meant, and then convert them into our place value system, and vice versa for the English numbers. Then, we looked at the similarities between all the numbers we had just converted. I found that they all had in common 
was that all the digits and numbers added up to eight. But not all maths we do includes numbers. For example, once we did a challenge where we had to represent a continent using squares as countries, or we had to plan a Silk Road journey and you had to try and make a profit. When you, get in, when you go into your next maths lesson, try and find patterns. Be inquisitive. It doesn't matter if you don't enjoy maths in the classroom. Maybe you could find some other way to explore and appreciate maths. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the next one to a groundbreaking discovery. Let me just put it out there. If maths wasn't around, we would have no screens, no TV, and certainly no clothes that fit us. <laughs> Look at what maths has done to us. It has given us so much more than we could ever have predicted. Maths. Is it monotonous? manageable or magic. <laughs> Just think of the possibilities. Oh. <laughs>